Hey guys, welcome to Breaking Feud. Um, this is a topic I wanted to want to discuss, and it's a thing where it's it's really people's opinion, but it's really on watches. So I've done a couple of watches uh, videos on watches before, but I want to go in depth on mostly watches, what your first watch should be, and why from a tech guy, you should stay away from smart watches. So yeah. So, um, I have experience in smart watches. I've had a Fitbit charge to from high school till March of twenty twenty one. When that died out, I actually bought a Casio uh, calculator watch, which I will show you now. But this was a watch I bought. Um, so when I went, when I actually went to New York uh, right after my spring semester had ended in 2021. So I went to New York and while I was in New York, my Fitbit watch died on me. And I was the type of dude who used to wear a lot of watches before I got the uh Fitbit chart uh Fitbit charge two watch. So my first watch was this. Um it was my first watch in a long series of collections. The reason I bought it was because I needed a watch to tell time and this was one where I can also use a calculator so more of a useful type of watch and obviously Marty McFly wore this and back to the future. So yeah it has some cool uh history behind it so yeah from there i actually started growing a lot of I, i've been having a watch collection um and obviously been wearing jewelry but i really love uh collecting watches uh so yeah i'll show you my um couple of the watches that i would actually recommend buying i mean like if you want to get into premium watches or you want to start your collection and i'll discuss why i prefer these watches over a smart watch like an apple watch so yeah now within the like if you go 80 to let's say 130 130 dollars um firstly i would say g-shock g-shock gives you that durability and actually gives you that luxury luxury quality build so um so around um 80 to 130 dollars around that price point i would also recommend from casio g-shocks um they like Casio watches I just showed you they offer you quality for the bank but unlike Casio these have Swiss movements uh, some of them offer Japanese movements I believe but I think they're mostly Swiss I really do love it they actually have a good built movement watches um, I think these are let me see. I know they have it. I know they say one of them. So yeah, so these are ja actually Japanese movements. So typically with Japanese movements, they do offer their, when I say mo like Japanese or Swiss, uh, um, Swiss movements, uh, they tend to be more those type of movements and watches tend to be on higher end, like four to like a thousand dollar watches, even more. Uh, and the fact that those movements are on these watches are good. Now the reason they're so low is because, um, well, let me show you. Let's take a look at something like this. This is a um, around a five hundred dollar watch from Citizen. 
with this you get uh, stainless steel um, the materials you use the way they're placed they they focus more on every single aspect of it this is more of a dress watch or a diver's watch but it's compared to this this is more of a durable watch it's it's a thing where the more luxurious part of these uh this which is really the movement and the actual dial itself it's brought into watches like these and they use for watches like these they use higher end durable um materials um to help with durability and it's really uh really it's the casing that is that gives you the high durable um protective things for your watch so they really protect your watch from anything and it's more about the quality of the durability of the casing uh, which they really focus on this is my most recent pickup uh this past week um so yeah i you can get different variations i would suggest this just because you this is a tad bit tighter than this this one i do like this it is a little bit thick but also it's not as tight on my wrist than this but this one's slimmer and sleeker which i do love so yeah i want to give a shout out to this uh citizen watch just actually uses solar power um it's also a japanese movement and i want to give a big shout out to q and t jewelry for uh, hooking me up with this i actually get most of my jewelry from them so a big shout out to them if you live in the austin area or the round rock area you gotta give them a try q and t jewelry that's what the place is. Got uh, th this watch from them, and I bought a citizen watch from them, which I gave it to someone close to me. So, yeah. Oh, let me actually show you the watch I got from them. So, this is the watch I got from them, which I gave to someone close to me. Um, so, yeah, I want to give a big shout out to them. So, yeah. And the reason I am showing citizen watches, uh, this citizen watch. But there's other ones in the price point, but I do love this. I love the style of this. This has um, stainless steel um, face, but um, the straps are more like military type straps. Cloth feel and whatnot. Um, I, I suggest this because it, it's, it gives you the sense of premium um, with it and but it's like a G-Shock S type of thing where it's more protective. And at least with this one, this yeah, you can wear it anywhere and it won't really hurt your wrist. I'm like wearing something like uh, something like this where maybe your hair can get into this or whatnot. So yeah, and citizen watches, you can never go wrong there. They're really focused on premium with and an amazing price point so yeah on um, this and uh, this might be a little controversial to say the least and i see a lot of people wear it and I, this was my first more of the premium watch pickups um i didn't know much i saw it all over you know amazon people wearing it i thought it was a more premium, a premium watch making but i don't know much i didn't know much about this company until like way down the line Invictus so they do make good replica type watches um this one does kind of look like one uh I forgot which Rolex it was but it does remind me of one of those one of the Rolex models this I think it's like a hundred and ten dollars it paid for almost the same price as this G-Shock watch so yeah uh this is i guess a okay pickup because it is trying to replicate but also give an homage to certain watches but i would suggest maybe picking up 
the Casio watches that I recommend and the G-Shock or something like this. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, within that price point of that Invicta watch, you can also pick up, and I would suggest this, I think you should always get it. Like, it's around 130 to 250 um, and it's the Orient watches. So this one is supposed to be diver watch. I changed it out for a leather strap, um, which is pretty cool. And I, I want I, I do want to talk about this for a second about watch straps. There has been a misconception about watch straps. Like on Apple watches, you can easily change out the bands, but with these, you, with watches like these, you can never. That's false. You could. So when I got this watch, I kind of didn't really take care of it. I got it when I was in middle school. And so I broke the the default one that came with that was in this um and so I went to Fossil to pick it up and uh Fossil offers watch bands um for you to attach to your watch. So I bought like a silicone one for this and then I was like, well let me change the band on this. This one I paid for Thirty dollars and it was really cheap, so it broke. So I'm gonna replace it with a fossil watch band. But yeah, Orient, it's it's alongside Sizen. It's actually more. These two are one of those watches where you pay for low, but you get premium, close to like four or five hundred dollar watch. So yeah, um, I will link uh, link one of the Orient watches down below, and I will suggest getting that. It, kind of it's in line with like looks like these uh within like the 150 to 230 dollar price range i'll look in down below uh it'll be through amazon so yeah my last pick um this will be my last pick because uh, we are stepping up into more premium territory which will be around like three to five hundred dollars. I got one for eight hundred. So this one will be the last one I would recommend. Um, it is oh citizen watch. Um, this one I actually re recommend. Let me actually pull up the name for this. Um, so yeah, this one I really do love. I paid like around I want to say two ninety. Let me pull it up. It was like 280, 290. That was with tax. So let me pull it up. The watch, the name of this watch is Citizen Corso AU104. I really do love this. And I think it's one of those watches where it is getting to the, almost towards the premium, premium lineup. But premium pricing, but you're still getting the best value watch. And when I say this, I mean like you actually get like an actual legit quality watch within this price point so yeah um this is also a japanese movement but um the there's one i would recommend there's a couple swiss watches i would do a i might do a, a separate video later talking about swiss versus japanese movements um uh, japan uh, japanese movements and which watches from the Swiss movements I would recommend and watch watches from the Japanese movements I would recommend. So yeah. So this is kind of pricey. This is a, I think $540 watch. It's from Tissot. This is actually a Swiss movement watch, but I wear this almost on a daily basis. This is a diver's watch. So essentially people who um, work in, you know, who work in these uh, like outdoor fields and whatnot and want to wear premium watches this is the way to go you know people who are divers they would wear watches like these this is a watch i would recommend it's more sporty and still actually gives you that luxury luxury quality um uh watch uh parts a stainless steel uh, i love the band on this actually so all th when I painted this room, I actually was wearing this watch. So you can see some of the paint stains, but I really love this. Um, so yeah, this is a watch I would actually recommend wearing. So yeah.
uh, honorable mention to this Invicta watch. Um, this is an automatic watch, but you can find any Invicta watches that are automatic for around this price point, which is eighty dollars. And with automatic watches, um, you actually get more of a. Um, uh, it's more of like self winding, so essentially it is around the movement of your hand. And that's how the watch, um, uh, the watch gets um worked up so essentially so there's a difference between movement and and being able to function so the so the, this watch is a japanese movement so it uses uh certain parts to function this this is a swiss movement watch uh uses certain uh movement to make this watch work but they both use uh, battery well with this one it's self winding so you kind of move around your wrist and it works and this is more of a long lasting watch which I prefer um, all you, you really have to take in you I would suggest obviously most of these watches you will have to take it into service to make sure you get the longevity but with this one you might want to a little bit more often to make sure um, this doesn't really wind up into becoming a garbage piece of jewelry so yeah but automatic watches tend to be really pricey but they're like but in terms of quality they're like way above like they're like six to a thousand to like fifteen hundred dollars price point so yeah uh this is also a this one i would recommend picking up uh, most of the Orient watches are automatic movements. Uh, they're automatic, but they're Japanese movements. I will link the couple down below that I would recommend picking up. This one is a discontinued model that I have in my hand, but there's a lot more that I would recommend, and I will link it down in the description. So, yeah. So, for example, I had shown y'all this watch. This watch is a sporty like watch, kind of like the Apple Watch. So unlike watches like these, with this, obviously it's a smart watch. So it has smartphone like kit built in, just an AI doing everything in the background, which is pretty cool, but you're paying like top dollar. So you're paying around similar pricing, like, the same price with this watch you can pick up this which actually gives you more of a quality base like movement and and the longevity of it and this is more of a not just a fashion statement but more utility statement um compared to this with this you're paying for the same price but the, it's really about the software the software is, will be updated really soon and easily and unlike watches like these or other watches I've shown you, it's really hard to replace a battery. And on top of that, it's a thing where you have to make sure you, you have the, not just the right iPhone, but also it has to run that certain OS in order for that phone and this to communicate. And at least with these, I don't have to worry about um obviously people don't know but you can change the bands on these so depending on the manufacturer of the watch for example like these off i can change and change out the bands for any first party bands that tso offers or a third party as long as it fits this over here with these ones obviously you can take them out and put a different one but that's the issue. This can be outdated, be outdated so easily. And on top of that, it doesn't use a normal battery, right? Like the circular one, it uses like their own smartphone like battery to where it's harder to replace. And on top of that, like it will be harder to find batteries in the long run to replace this. 
and I don't see really the use for this. And what's one thing I don't like is scratches. So my iPhone has a really deep scratch. I actually just removed this screen protector, but somehow I got a really deep scratch on this. I don't really need it on this watch, but yeah, this watch gets scratched up real easily. And at least with this, I don't have much scratches just because they're using a high, I guess a high sapphire type glass on this. And this is actually much more durable so, than this. And this is stainless steel. This is aluminum. To get an, a stainless steel version of the Apple Watch, you have to pay infinite amount of price. It's like, I think close to $1,000. It's going to get outdated easily. At least this will give me value. And I was, it's not out of date. I'm like this. This, I have to constantly take it out charge it i have to bring the charger with me and it's just a whole hassle yeah and then on top of that let's say i lose my iphone right essentially i will have to and let's say if i lose my iphone and i need a phone instantly the thing is not a lot of places sir have unlocked iphones not even like a cheaper or an older alternative one i'll have to go to a use a a pawn shop or something most of the places sell either locked or unlocked android phones i can't i won't be able to can get my apple watch to it and that really sucks this one this is i there this is more an investment than this on top of that some of these watches actually hold up their value not just that their value actually increases over time Unlike these where once you walk out the store with these, the value decreases. So in a sense, this is more worthy. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and on top of that, I work at Lowe's and I wear my watch on this wrist. And sometimes we have to pawn gloves, safety gloves for certain tasks, but one thing I hate about wearing gloves is I wear it on this wrist, my left wrist, and the glove in it itself keeps hitting the the um this button over here and and obviously you can change the orientation but anytime I do that and I get to the other side I end up just hitting the button no matter what. And then if I change it to this side the button gets hit on my arm whenever I do any movements. So it's really annoying. On top of that, I would have to pay a lot more for repair for this watch. I mean, obviously I'm pretty sure there's certain watches around similar price point where you have to pay a lot for the repairments, but I mean, most of the time if you where normally or if you take really good care of it you have to repair it like maybe remove scratches or change the band on this or get a battery replaced it won't cost you an arm and a leg unlike this like getting bands on this if you go through apple's route it's like 50 60 dollars you can find ones for cheaper but they're depending on what brand you get sometimes they're not really good quality and on top of that you have to buy one that's specific for this watch and then sometimes there isn't a specific style to your liking at least with these you can also make your own handmade band to your liking and attach it to these uh, to um that rod thing that holds the washing the watch band together with these you have you can't really make your own because apple has this thing where they make their own type of technology to hold the apple watches together as a whole the other complicated mess so yeah do i think it's worth investing unless if you actually use this use every single feature and you need it because you need to track your health and everything else i mean if you if if you have certain health problems 
and this is able to give you a real golfer i think this is a perfect investment other than that if you're someone like me a tiki you don't really need to spend all your money on this because then there's newer models and you have to spend more money on buying the actual new one new version of apple watch once this gets outdated because then you also upgrade your phone a couple years later and then this will get outdated and then you have to buy a new apple watch at least with this i don't have to upgrade every time i save money the money that i will be, be spending on this watch which is be on normal repairs and maintenance on the, on this which will last me a good while so yeah thank you so much for watching this video as always please stay tuned for more content give this a thumbs up share this video with everyone else and have a great day.